everyone, and welcome back to Short Stories for Kids. I'm your host, Lucy, and today we have a special request for a story about a dinosaur. This story is called Timmy and the Dinosaur. Timmy lived on the edge of town. At the bottom of his garden was a wood full of tall trees, prickly bushes, and dark paths. It was not a place that Timmy wanted to go into. He imagined that the wood was full of hairy, hungry bears, all looking for a Timmy-sized snack to fill their tummies. So instead, Timmy played in his garden. He had a swing, a little red play tent, a baseball bat, and a ball made from foam. But his favorite thing to play with in the garden was his bright yellow ring-a-ding flying ring. It was about the size of a dinner plate, flat with a big hole in the middle, and Timmy just loved to throw it. He would send it sailing through the air from one end of the garden to the other, then race to pick it up before throwing it back again. He was pretty good at it. One night, Timmy jumped from the back porch, landed on the green grass of the garden, snatched up the ring-a-ding flying ring, and sent it soaring down the length of the garden. It was a great throw. He was an expert at throwing the ring in a straight line so that it didn't disappear over a neighbor's fence. Timmy was already racing after it. Down, down the garden it flew, but instead of landing on the grass, the ring-a-ding flying ring kept on flying. In fact, it flew straight into the woods. Timmy slowed to a stop before the tall trees and stared into the prickly bushes. He could not see his ring-a-ding flying ring. Oh no, sighed Timmy, I've lost it. Feeling sad, Timmy went and sat in his little red play tent. He loved that flying ring, but now it was lost. Somewhere in the woods with the hairy, hungry bears. He was just wondering if hairy, hungry bears ate ring-a-ding flying rings when there was a strange noise from outside of the tent. It sounded like a hiccup. Hiccup! There it was again. Somebody was outside the tent. Hiccup! A bear, thought Timmy. A hairy, hungry bear? Oh, it's eaten my flying ring, and now it wants to eat me. Hiccup. Hello, said Timmy with a shaky voice. If you're a hairy, hungry bear, then let me tell you that there is nobody in here. This tent is completely empty. Oh, is it? Said a voice from outside. How strange! I thought I saw a little boy crawl in there. Hiccup! No, no, it's all empty in there, Mr. Bear, said Timmy. Oh, well, that's a shame. I was really hoping he could help me. My apologies then, said the voice. I've clearly made a mistake. Hiccup! You're most welcome. Uh, goodbye, said Timmy from inside. Goodbye, said the voice. Goodbye, said Timmy again. Timmy sat there in silence, listening. The hairy, hungry bear had gone. Carefully, Timmy poked his head through the tent flap. He was clutching the foam baseball bat, just in case. Nothing. The garden was empty. Looking towards the woods, there was no sign of a bear at all. He took a step closer. Hiccup! One of the prickly bushes shook gently. Timmy moved closer still. Uh, excuse me, he said. What exactly do you need help with? Oh, hello again, said the voice from the other side of the bush. Boy, well, if I'm honest, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you. Hiccup! Oh, please don't be embarrassed, said Timmy. What's wrong? Hiccup? Oh, perhaps it would be easier if I show you, suggested the voice. 
The prickly bush began to rustle and shake as something moved around it. Nervously, Timmy gripped his foam baseball bat tighter. To Timmy's surprise, the creature that stepped into his garden was not a hairy, hungry bear. Instead, it was a long-necked dinosaur, about the size of a big dog. Even more surprising, it was wearing Timmy's ring-a-ding flying ring like a necklace. You're not a bear, said Timmy. Well spotted, said the dinosaur. Hiccup! You're a dinosaur, said Timmy, not quite believing his eyes. Oh, that's correct. You are clever, smiled the dinosaur. Hiccup! Uh, I'm quite sure, according to my big book of dinosaurs, that all dinosaurs are extinct, explained Timmy. Are we? said the dinosaur. Well, I don't think that's quite right. Hiccup! I'm pretty sure I'm not extinct. Timmy looked at the dinosaur carefully. Hmm, you don't look extinct. I think I know what the problem is, explained the dinosaur. Hiccup! Normally, us dinosaurs are very, very quiet. We're so quiet that you humans just don't see us. But ever since this ring flew over my head and slid down my neck, I've had the most terrible hiccups. Hiccup? Oh, said Timmy. I'm ever so sorry. That flying ring belongs to me. It's my fault it's stuck around your neck. Hiccup? No need to apologize, said the dinosaur, stretching his neck out low. I'm just happy to return it. Timmy took hold of the bright yellow ring's edge and guided it along the dinosaur's long neck and over the top of its head. There, said Timmy, got it. Awesome, said the dinosaur. And listen, my hiccups have gone. With a sad voice, Timmy said, oh, that's good. The dinosaur noticed this. Well, is something wrong? I guess you'll be going now, Timmy said. Well, I don't have to, said the dinosaur. In fact, I was kind of hoping you would show me how your flying ring works. Really? asked Timmy. Oh, amazing! Oh, wait there! And with that, Timmy raced back towards the house. Upon arriving, he sent the ring-a-ding flying ring up into the air. It sailed straight down the center of the garden to where the dinosaur waited. Then, at the very last moment, the dinosaur caught it by poking his head through the ring's center to send it sliding down its neck. Ha <laughs> ha, you caught it, laughed Timmy with delight. Hiccup, said the dinosaur with a grin. So remember, if you're ever walking past a garden and you hear somebody hiccup, there just might be a dinosaur playing nearby. The and